I know a lot of people get overwhelmed with 3D. I wanna show you how you can take a regular model that's T-posing like this, and within seconds, give it some animations that you can play around with and transition between, all without having to build out the animations yourself in a modeling program like Blender or using the Unity animator. And so I'm gonna assume you have at least some understanding of Unity if you're looking for animations, but, but the first thing you wanna do is actually just like find a model. I just did a quick look on the Unity asset store. I found a 3D model for free. This is called Banana Man. I put the link in the description below. I downloaded him and put him into my project and basically just dragged him onto a new 3D scene. And here you go. We're back to a new scene with our Banana Man. This is all arbitrary. It doesn't really matter what you use. I'm using somebody that looks like a humanoid, right? It looks like a human. And so this is gonna work with any humanoid animations we find. So once we put him in and run the game, we're now at a stage where we have a model that is T-posing and just ready to be souped up with animation. Where do we find these animations? You'll see a lot of people use this site if you're watching streams or YouTube. This is Mixamo.com. I'll put the link in the description as well. You can sign up for free like I did. And in here you have a whole bunch of animations and even characters you can use. But for our case here, I don't really care about using these characters, right? I don't care about using this mutant for an example. I just want the motion that's happening here. But I'm gonna go ahead and type in box idle. And this is fine enough. I like how this looks. You'll get a preview, you can drag around, you'll see kind of what it's gonna look like. And so this is gonna translate very well to our character in Unity. And so at this point, all I need to do is hit download. You could change the frames here. The more frames there are, the more smooth the animation's gonna be. So we could do 60. An FBX binary file by default is fine for us, and I'm not gonna change anything else. You can do with skin or without. I'll choose without, because I'm just looking for the motion. And now you can hit download. So I downloaded that idle animation and I brought it into my project. I have it right here highlighted. And you'll see some parts underneath, but we actually wanna select the top layer. And when we do this, you'll see you have some options now at the top right in our inspector. Now there's a lot of settings here and different tabs, and this can be very overwhelming if you're new to 3D and you're new to animation, you don't really know what's going on. So I'm just gonna show you the quick and fast things I do just to get this motion put onto my character. And then I refine things from there. So I actually like to go to rig. And because this is a humanoid, we wanna change this animation type from generic to humanoid. And I wouldn't suggest this if you were doing something like a dog or something like that. But once we have humanoid selected, I'm going to hit apply. It'll do some conversions. And now the only other thing I like to do is go to animation. So under the animation tab, we basically have all of our configurations as if you were to click on a regular Unity animation. This is just the window for that. So we have our name, which we can change here. You could also change it in the project settings. Doesn't really matter. But because this is an idle animation, I'm actually gonna set loop to true. And I'll just change this here for convenience. I'll change it to idle, the name of the animation. And then I'm gonna make sure I go to the bottom and hit apply. And those are the only two changes I'm going to make to this at all. So you can keep this if you like, but I just need the motion animation, which is this idle file here selected. So I could drag this out of the scene or you could do control D and duplicate it. It doesn't really matter. You just wanna get this motion out, or at least I like to do that. And then I usually delete the source object that came with the download because it's kind of bloated and I'm not gonna use it again once I get my motion right. So if you're with me so far, we now have an animation that's ready to be used. And so if we click on our Banana Man, we'll see that we don't have an animator controller. You might already have this in your game, but since I don't, the easiest thing for me to do is just click and drag this animation onto the Banana Man. And you'll see it creates a animator controller for us called Banana Man, or just whatever the name of your game object is. So we can open this up. And so by default, our idle animation is gonna get played right off the bat whenever we start. So let's go ahead and test this. So I just moved the game camera over a little bit so we can see the character a little better. And I made the floor a little bit bigger, but otherwise everything's exactly the same. So if we go ahead and test this now, you'll see that the game starts and our player is now in our idle stance, which we just downloaded. So it's really fast and easy to import an animation and play it. If I was doing this at full speed, it takes like 15 seconds. It's really, really easy. And so now we can actually go back to Mixamo and look for anything else. We could look through some different punch animations and find one that we like, or some jumping animations, really whatever you want. I'm gonna try punch and jumping jacks just for the demo, but the same thing, you just hit download. I'm not changing any settings this time because it remembers it from the first time, but these are my settings, FBX 60 frames without skin, and I hit download. So once it's imported to my project, I'll just go through it again really fast. I'll click jumping jacks, I'll go to rig, I make it humanoid and hit apply, I go to animation, I'll make it loop, and I'll call it jumping jacks as well. 
and hit apply. And then at this point, I'll just control D the motion, delete the source, and we now have another animation we can throw in here and we can do the same thing for punch. Cool, so at this point, we now have our animated controller that has an idle state, a jumping jacks animation, as well as a punch animation. And I just set up transitions to and fro from idle where I basically created a punch and jumping jacks bool parameter in the animator. And if it's true or false, it'll just transition between them. And this is just to showcase the transitions. I'm not trying to showcase here the best way to do animations. I'm literally just doing this to demonstrate the different animations to you guys. And then I wrote this really quick script that I'm not trying to get you to copy, but just so you're aware, we're just fetching our animator. And then once we press Q, W, or E, we're basically setting those different bools in the animator for punch or jumping jacks. We're setting it to true. And then when we try to go to our idle animation, we just set both of those to false. Again, this is just for the demonstration. But with that, we can now go ahead and transition between say our default idle animation to a punching animation. We could go ahead back to our idle and we could press E and we could try our jumping jacks animation. And you can see like out of the box with a quick two button import, whatever that was, right? We changed two things. Everything looks pretty smooth and good. And we can go ahead and fix little things. Like we'll notice their feet are going through the floor and I'm not actually moving the player or doing anything like that. We're just doing simple transitions between animation state, but I at least wanted to break the barrier for some of you that are terrified of 3D animation. It can be really daunting if you have to do it yourself, but there are resources out there that are free that you can access and use in your projects now. Let me know what you think, and I hope this helped you out.